Hi, I'm Suzanne Backner, and I'm the playwright and director of the award-winning show, The Good Adoptee. It is a riveting and outrageous, totally true story of my search for my birth parents against the stubborn obstacle course of New York State sealed records. The Good Adoptee's universal theme of identity, connection, and belonging reach the adoption community and way beyond. The Good Adoptee is performed by the amazing actress, Anna Bridgeforth. It has won multiple awards, toured to the London International Fringe Festival and all over the US, including a seven week, nine city Connecticut tour to support the vital legislative efforts of Access Connecticut and to the SJCC in Seattle. The Good Adoptee has been enjoying a global audience in its virtual presentations, including the 2021 launch of the National Association of Adoptees and Parents and the Our Kids fundraiser with the Schubert Theater in New Haven. With The Good Adoptee, we have partnered with many nonprofit organizations to raise funds and awareness, advocate for adoptee rights, and to successfully bring about legislative change. We do dynamic talkbacks, expert panel discussions, conferences, community engagement, masterclasses, and workshops. I hope you enjoy these highlights from the show. I don't know how I got the nickname The Bunny. It could be because of the outfits I wear. I say this as if I dress myself, which I don't. They are one-piece flannel footed pajamas in yellow, pink, and white, ears flopping over, vinyl padding on the feet. We call them bunny suits. I drink strawberry Nestle Quick, and we call it pink bunny milk. I also have tiny hands and feet, and they call me Princess Little Paws. I feel like they're bunny, even though they got me at the bunny store. Sometimes I worry about being returned. When you're a homemade bunny, you can't be returned. But I love my parents. I feel like I belong with them, and I can't imagine being anywhere else. I am their bunny, and I always will be. I always knew I was adopted. I don't remember being told. I always just knew. For me, life did not begin at conception. It began at adoption. For years, I doubt my own existence. Those missing 11 months, conception to adoption, completely erasing any notion of my creation and creating an underlying mystery. Where do I come from? What happened to me? Do I really exist? Am I really here? Hi, this is Suzanne Backner. You're my caseworker. I'm your case. How can I help you? I'm very busy. Oh, I just want to look into my file. Uh, I, I just want to look into my background. I don't, I don't necessarily want to meet anybody. It's good to take it slow, baby steps. That's what we recommend. Are you still there? Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, what I'd really like to do is look at my file. I just want a copy of it. I can't give you the file. Why not? It's not yours. How can my own file not belong to me? It belongs to the agency, New York State Law. I don't know how I'm not making myself clear. Uh, I'm sorry. I just thought that once I was 18 and I was ready, I could just look at the file. That's not how it works, dear. Then explain it to me. You can't see the file. <laughs> OK, got it. I can't see the file. It's for your own protection. How does this possibly protect me? I didn't say it did. I said it was designed to. <laughs> I'm not a child. I don't need protection. I need information. My hands are tied. It's not up to me. I didn't write the legislation, nor do I agree with it. But we have to follow the lot of the letter, no matter how antiquated it is. But if you don't even agree with it, I told you my hands are tied. I could lose my license, or this 100-year-old agency could be forced to close its doors forever. Or worse, we could get sued. I can help you with your background information once you filed with NYSAIR. What's that? NYSAIR, the New York City Adoption Information Registry. I'll send you the form. Click. The missing link does send me the form, along with a pamphlet covered in little pink and blue baby footprints. I find this offensive. <laughs> I am no longer a baby. My foot is bigger than this entire pamphlet. Why can't I have access to my origin story, my ancestry, my medical and genetic history that's contained in that file? Why does this complete stranger have access to it and I don't? I decide to let my parents know that I'm going to do a search. Well, Sue, I can't say that I agree with you doing this. I just don't understand why you feel the need to do it. We don't want you to get hurt. People could take advantage of you. People already take advantage of me. It's hard enough with missing files and sealed records. There are sealed records for a reason, right or wrong. That's just the way people did it. Look, if you feel like this is something you truly have to do, I will support it because I support you. Of course we support you, Bunny. Thank you. Just know that you may be disappointed or even hurt by what you find. We all know the story of the guy who found his biological parents. They rejected him, and he ended up killing 12 people. What? I'm speaking, of course, of David Berkowitz. You know, 
the son of Sam. <laughs> Are you saying that if I do this search, Dad, I'm going to become the daughter of Sam? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I want you to find birth my, both my birth parents, not just my birth mom. I work on a no-fi, no-fee basis, so you won't get charged unless I find your birth parents. If I can't find anything within five months, which is the duration of the contract, I usually can't help you out, but you won't even get charged expenses. But you won't have found my birth parents either. I want to assure you that as an adoptee myself, I would never take advantage of my fellow adoptee. Of course not. All right, I'm going to dive right in. Give me a couple months. Click. Month six. The thing is, when I'm working on a case, I got to go all in. Just fully immerse myself in it and eat, sleep, and shit the case like it's the only thing in the world. That's how I solve my cases. It would be fascinating to see how you work. I can't divulge trade secrets. Of course not. You're a savant. What's that? You know, like a genius? I can only do so much. I'm a human being. What do you expect from me, Suzanne? You want me to work miracles? I can only work with what you give me. Oh, I'm sorry, so it's my fault that my, but the records are sealed and by some twist of fate that my last name is Smith, like I willed this to make your life more difficult? Sorry. Hey, you know what? I just had this epiphany, this really great idea for you. Uh-huh. Why don't you come on my show on the Oprah Winfrey Network and do a video appeal? You know, straight to the camera like you're talking directly to your birth parents, real dramatic-like. Oh my God, I'm going to be sick. It could be the difference between not finding and finding your birth family. God, wouldn't that just make me look desperate and pathetic? I mean, not that I'm not, but, well, do you want to find them or don't you? What's your viewership? That's not the point. Think about it. Click. The book, and here's the good news pot. When your case gets published in my book, then millions of people will read it and hopefully come forward, and you'll have a better chance of finding your birth family. This is how you decide to tell me that my case is completely hopeless. You don't have the decency to give me an update on my case. You just launch into your book deal like I give a shit and then tell me that you can't solve my case by letting me know the good news is you want to include my unsolvable case in your fucking book? You're being really unprofessional. I'm being unprofessional? If you keep yelling at me, I'm going to hang up the phone. I am not yelling. You're using a bad tone. I'm not using a bad tone. Click. After I get off the phone, Bob informs me that I was indeed using a bad tone. <laughs> I thought my case was on hold. Suzanne, I found your birth family. How do you know it's them? I spoke to your Uncle Sandy. Uncle Sandy? When I called the house, your Uncle Sandy's wife picked up. She was a bit freaked out. This is your aunt that I'm talking about, the same woman that was your Uncle Sandy's fiance when your birth mother and your birth father were living in New York City during the last four months of the pregnancy. Your, she put your Uncle Sandy on the phone right away, and I said, I'm calling on behalf of a long-lost relative of your brother's, and you know what Uncle Sandy said? Mm. He said, she be what, 30 or 35 now? Boom. Well, I don't get it. I made no mention of your age or your gender, and he said, she'd be what, 30 or 35 now? Boom. <laughs> oh my God, so it's really them? I am sorry to report that your birth father passed away three years ago. Oh. I had a feeling, but <clears throat> to hear it out loud, I'm gonna need you to process your payment to me in full before I can share any more information with you. The, serv the fee for my services in your case is $2,500. I accept all major credit cards, direct deposit, wire transfer, PayPal, although please note that an $80 additional fee does apply, personal checks, cashier's checks, although they'll be held for three business days. Click. My birth father is found, but he's gone now, and I'll never meet him here, never. To find out that he passed away one year after I started actively searching is heartbreaking. If the records had been open, I may have had an opportunity to meet him. I'm going to send you a copy of, your, of Michael's obituary. It's beautifully written. He was married to his third wife at the time of his death. Her name was Suzanne, coincidentally. He had five kids, all in their 20s, but it's unclear which ones of any of them are biological siblings. I mean, two of them were born four months apart, so it's not like they were in the same womb. Maybe some of them were adopted, right? You know, Suzanne, it's so important to know who your bios are. There's a natural chemical attraction, so you have to protect yourself in a sealed record society, or you could wind up fucking your brother and having incest babies, and that would suck, right? <laughs> right. I can now disclose that your birth mother's first name is Dorothy. <sighs> my favorite movie of all time is The Wizard of Oz, and you're telling me that my birth mother's name is Dorothy? You're kidding me. I would never. Gotta go. Good luck. Click. Hello?
Is this Suzanne? Yes. This is your mother. Oh. Hi. I got your email, darling. I was completely gobsmacked. Uh, so am I. I'm over the moon. This is so incredible. I didn't think I'd ever find you. I didn't think I'd ever find you. This is incredible. Oh my God, it's her. There is an actual human on the other end of the line who conceived me and incubated me and delivered me who is my mother. I am completely awake now. I don't know why I'm so surprised I sent the message the night before. Are you still in Ireland? Yes, darling. I can't believe it's really you. God, this is absolutely surreal. I have always loved you and missed you. You are an incredibly difficult person to find. My childhood nickname was Rusty. Everybody called me that growing up because of my red hair and it just stuck. I legally changed my name to Rusty and then kept my second husband's name after we divorced. God, my birth parents were really bad at this whole marriage thing. <laughs> what should I call you? Why don't you call me Mama Too? That way I'm not stepping on your mom's toes. Okay, I like that. Mama Too. Wonderful. I'm so sorry to do this, but I have to go. Can we talk again later? Of course we can. Anything you need, honey bunny. I get Rusty's contact information. We agree to talk later, and I get off the phone. Click. This whole, hello, I'm your mother conversation is completely overwhelming. The connection is so strong, so overpowering, I can only take it in small doses. I go with Bob to a spin class at SoulCycle. It is, after all, non-refundable. <laughs> I can't believe I do that. Neither can Bob. I mean, what if I never get a chance to talk to her again? What is wrong with me? Several years ago, a stranger telling me I'm your mother would have stopped me dead in my tracks and my defenses would have gone up in a flash. How dare you call yourself my mother? I only have one mother and she's a few blocks away in the apartment where she raised me and you lady are an imposter. But I prepared for this. I made the psychic space for the idea, or rather the reality, that I have two sets of parents. She didn't identify herself as my mom, but as my mother. The language gets very complicated. Birth mom, first mom, natural mom. There's no satisfactory language and it can get very tricky. I would never in a million years put a qualifier in front of my mom and dad when referring to them. They are not my adoptive parents, they're just my parents. Just like Rusty isn't just Rusty, like she's some old friend or my birth mother or my biological mom, like that's the only connection. She's mama too. It is so weird that mama too calls me honey bunny because that's what my mom calls me. Usually separate, honey or bunny, but sometimes, honey bunny. It's like I've been struck by a huge bolt of lightning. I have to catch up with my body. There's this beautiful, smoky voice on the other end of the line that sounds like mine, and even though I cut the call short, the truth is I can't get enough of it. I could listen to her for hours. Rusty has a beautiful voice, did I mention that? <laughs> Melodious, soft, strong, feminine. Talking to Mama too is like taking some sort of fantastic drug that affirms my existence. And as I'm walking away from cycling where I can just be in my body and just be there and nowhere else, and we're going to the diner to have breakfast, it slowly dawns on me. I exist. I actually exist. I I'm connected to an actual human being. I was not delivered by a stork. I did, was not manufactured in the Louise Wise baby factory. I did not materialize into being in the bunny store. I was not transported from outer space and shot put into my parents' arms when they adopted to me. I am connected to a real human being, this woman speaking her beautiful voice to me who's walking around planet Earth from which I came. I come from a real, live, flesh and blood human being. There's a real, live, flesh and blood woman speaking her voice to me and I am on air. I exist. I am real. I am here. <laughs>